Hi everyone, I'm Evan, I'm a video game professor, amongst a few other things. And I want to talk to you today about one of many possible futures. Um, right now, most of my life revolves around computers. It just does. I'm a video game designer, and I make things that all basically involve software or hardware creation of some type. Now, imagine tomorrow there is a solar flare, or an electromagnetic pulse, or some kind of massive electromagnetic eminence that fries all of our computers. And not just my computers, not like, I, you know, I can't play Doom, that's fine, but like the infrastructure of how information gets to my house. The internet cell, all gone. Power, gone. Maybe you live in a part of the world where you used to have spotty internet connection or spotty power. Maybe you have no power. Maybe you do this by choice, you're homesteading or living off the grid. There are a lot of reasons why you would want to consider a life without power, internet, cell service. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's not just EMP and disaster, although that is my big fear here. It could just be who you are, what you want to do in the world, or where you were born. Okay, so an EMP goes off, all our power is shut off. What do we do? Now, if you're me, and you've never really been camping, and you have bad eyesight, and you can't get a garden to grow, and what good am I in that world where I can't do those things? The internet and computers are the method by which I connect to the world, and if that is gone, who am I, and what do I do? Now, a healthy person would probably say, well, you adapt to what's around you, and you learn how to work the land, and, you, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna bring a computer into this whole new situation, and that's what this is. Now, before I talk about this device, I want to talk briefly about Jay Dosher. Uh, Jay Dosher runs a website called back7.co. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing all this correctly. It's the, one of the pitfalls of the internet. I know how to spell everyone's name, but I don't know how to say it. Um, in 2019, in November, Jay posted this project, the Off-Grid CyberDeck Raspberry Pi Recovery Kit. And I immediately thought three things. One, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Two, how generous and cool is this person to make this amazing project and release like the 3D print files, the idea for it just into the public sphere under Creative Commons? How amazing is that? And three, I am so inspired I have to try to make one of these. Because I think about what, what I am in the future without power a lot. Uh, the Anthropocene, climate change, it's something that's kicking around up here and I didn't have a good answer for that. And Jay's project really got me to think, oh wow, I actually could make something that might be cool and fun to make, but also very, very useful. So I'm about to show you this, but again, all credits gotta go to Jay. Please, please, please go check out his website um, and all his stuff. It's just, it's bonkers, it's so cool. Okay, this is my Raspberry Pi off-grid recovery kit. It comes in a Pelican case. Pelican cases are great. They're really rugged and sort of waterproof. And I've already dropped this thing like three or four times and it's been totally fine. So let's open this thing up. Hey, it's a little laptop and it's all red and cool. Okay, this device is a laptop. It runs off a Raspberry Pi system and I'm keeping it and I'm not showing this on screen because like it's just a box, but I've built a box that is lined with copper on the inside and the copper is grounded. So if there is ever an electromagnetic event that acts like a Faraday cage and disperses the electricity into the ground, hopefully preserving what's going on in here. Now, we're gonna punch in in a sec and I'll kind of take you on a tour of the hardware. But for right now, this is an off-grid DIY laptop that can run off of a ton of different power sources, we'll talk about in a second, and has a lot of options for usability. It can act like a server, it can act like a computer, you can run it with the screen or without, options. But what's on it? So right now, when you boot this thing up, there is all of Wikipedia available offline, including images and including Wiki Voyage, because I'm going to imagine that knowing where you are in the world is probably going to be pretty valuable. That is brought to you by the Qix project. And like I said, this can be a DHCP server. So if you run the Qix Wikipedia project and serve out, you can let people on your local area network connect to your version of offline Wikipedia, which is pretty great. Um, additionally, there are maps of everywhere on the planet that I could find, just gigs and gigs of maps, and gigs and gigs of PDFs on like, how to irrigate the land, guides to midwifery, guides to beekeeping, guides to social infrastructure, how to reinforce a door, tons of things that like, I don't know, but I'm very good at following like tutorials, so I figured, okay, well, if it ever does hit the fan, I can just look up how to dig a trench here, and maybe keep the sewage away from where I live. Sounds pretty good. 
So this is a hopefully kind of one-stop shop look up for all the things I would need to know if I had to survive like 18 months without electricity, without um, the internet, right in one spot. Okay, let's punch in and take a closer look at it and uh, then we'll kind of answer some more questions on that. So this is the Raspberry Pi. Here we got some lovely keycaps. We got some Kale Box Navy, which I think has a nice little heft to it. We got USB into our USB hub right here. So we have three USB ports that just go directly into the Raspberry Pi that's inside. Additionally, we have an ethernet port that just goes right into the Pi itself. Um, coming from this side, we have a five volt power intake USB port. Um, so you can just go five volts in from a wall board, which is totally fine. You could also go five volts into from a USB battery charger. This is just a battery pack with a solar element on top. So leave this out in the sun all day. It'll charge the battery. You can plug the battery in through five volts and you should be able to have a pretty decent sized runtime as long as you're able to charge this in the sun because you know, you might not have access to power from the wall or access to power from a battery. So let's have something that runs off solar. If things really get complicated, I whipped this up as well. This is a USB to just straight up leads. You can connect this to any battery that's between five and 16 volts. And this is a uh, step down converter that takes whatever battery power you have and converts it to a five volt charge. Additionally, there are some protections inside this that I'll show you in a second. This turns the battery on. There's an internal 12 volt chargeable battery in here that turns it on and off, which allows it to be charged or used. This turns on the switch for this USB input. So you can gate if you want power to come in. This switch is between battery and external, the onboard battery or the external port right here. This is a 12 volt barrel jack that allows you to charge the internal battery. You can see that there's a network switch here. This allows you to toggle that on and off so you can conserve power if you need to. Same with the screen. Um, so you could run the Pi and the switch or the Pi and the screen or the Pi and the switch and screen or whatever configuration you want. This is an auxiliary port. So if you need to listen to music, but you don't want other people to listen to it. And this is a GPIO port. Now the Raspberry Pi is a small single board computer that has a lot of GPIO or general purpose in out. You can do a lot of things with them. And I wanted to make a few accessible from the front. So here are six pins that are labeled on here. I put a diagram so you can use them and you can use them just as you would with the regular GPIO pins. Okay, that's all for the outside. Let's take a look at the inside. Again, with Jay Dosher's original design, this is friction fit and you can just pop it up if you're strong enough. There we go. We have our screen. Here is our battery pack. I made a little cage for it. You can disassemble the battery and there we go. This is a 12,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, with this little holder. Now underneath here, you can see that there's the Raspberry Pi in here hooked up to the screen. Um, some extra things that I wanna show that are kind of interesting. Um, one is right here, you can see that there's actually an inline fuse to handle the power. If this thing ever draws more than three amps, it'll pop this fuse. And for those of you who are familiar with automotive electronics, this is a windshield wiper fuse. So if you ever need to replace it or scavenge it, this is pretty accessible. Um, additionally, right here, it's hard to see, but there is a capacitor to deal with smoothing. So if you ever really quickly need to switch from external power to internal power via the battery, you can do that without interrupting the Pi. You only have a, like a second to do it, but it's something. Yeah, I think that's basically it for the guts. Uh, we have USB extenders to go to the port. We have an ethernet extender to go to the front port. The wiring works kind of just like I said. Um, Jay's original designs are all on uh, Tinkercad and Thingiverse. Mine will be up on Thingiverse. And if I get really excited, I'll probably do a wiring diagram too, but we'll see about that. Um, okay, I'm gonna pack this whole thing back up. I'll see you back in the other scene. Okay, so that's the kit as it stands right now. Um, I'm always looking to kind of expand it. So if you have any ideas about what could go on this, I'm definitely interested in hearing them. Um, Again, you can check out more about this on my website. I'll put the link in the description and you should also seriously check out Jay Dosher's website and all of his web materials. It's super amazing what he's been able to and really inspiring. Um, I hope this has helped you maybe think about what your place is in an in a 18 month electricity gap or what your place is in a society where a solar flare has happened. Or maybe this alleviates some of your stress and thinking, I really wanna travel to places where electricity is spotty, but 
I still want to play Minecraft while I'm there. You can do it. You can do it with something like this. So hopefully this opens up options for you and gives you something to think about as we go into what could potentially be a very, very interesting future. All right. Thanks so much. Go make some cool stuff.